time now for our daily edition of Truth or Fake, which is our daily fact-checking segment in association with the France 24 Observers. For that, I'm joined by James Creedon, who's Hi, here Tom. with me now. Hi, James. Uh, you're going to be talking about a video that's been circulating on social media. The claim is that this video, uh, these events, happened in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Tell us more. All right, so it's a video that has been circulating on Facebook. It's been, the video alone has been seen 125,000 times. So this really got out there. And what you can see in the video is uh, quite a violent scene of a JCB uh, crushing and demolishing and uh, vandalizing a whole series of trucks. So intriguing stuff. And you can also see that quite a few people are um, trying to stop this from happening. Um, so in any case, uh, the commentary on uh, the, the video um, spoke about a, 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 a Congolese, uh, the man operating the JCB being Congolese. Oh, he was furious over the over the treatment of local employees at a Chinese operated uh, mine. And that this fury over the alleged mistreatment explains that vandalism uh, and revenge meted out against the company. Now, as I said, seen 125,000 times, but there is something that uh, ought to um, grab our attention, and that is uh, the writing on the back of uh, this guy's shirt here. Uh, it's actually in uh, Turkish, uh, which would seem to, you know, we, we ought to be smelling a rat at that point. Why would somebody be wearing a shirt with Turkish written on it uh, at a uh, Chinese operator Congolese mine uh, could happen, but it's unlikely. And the operator, the observers team, uh, operated a reverse image search using this tool in Vid, and that shows where that video had previously been published, and it had, it it cropped up on a whole load of Turkish media. So this did take place in Turkey, in fact. And uh, the events took place in mid-August. You have CNN Turk Turkey talking about it here. You can see the same scene unfolding. Um, also, this uh, particular uh, website, uh, news website, KRT, uh, also has images of uh, that particular uh, scene. And uh, in any case, what we, we know is it happened in Cyrenac in southeast Turkey. It was not a worker uh, taking out his venom on his boss, but it was actually a business owner who was av uh, avenging uh, um, a, a dispute over a dispute with associates. The man even actually took the, the man behind that uh, spoke about his reasons and his motivations in a letter that was published in media elsewhere. So anyway, look, the details are not so important. It took place in Turkey. It had nothing to do with uh, Chinese mining interests in Congo. OK, and there's another story you've picked out, which is, uh, you know, perhaps another example of misleading video circulating. And it's, it illustrates, again, the tensions between Congolese workers and this same recurrent theme of uh, Chinese bosses abusing them. Right. And again, you, you, this, this was a you know, Facebook video, uh, a video that was published on Facebook, rather. And you can see uh, in the text here in French uh, talking about... Uh, this happened in this look at this treatment of a Congolese person in his own country. Uh, this is too much from the Chinese. And what you see here is a scene uh, when you actually see the video itself that is a uh, quite uh, an appalling uh, video, Tom. Uh, I caution viewers uh, that it is pretty gruesome stuff. And you see uh, uh, a man appears to be uh, a Chinese manager of a, of a, of a mine, and he's actually whipping uh, this guy who's tied up uh, in what is a scene of uh, absolute uh, brutality. I'm not sure we necessarily need to see everything that goes on here, but uh, just take my word for it. It's pretty brutal stuff. And um, But again, with the reverse image search, uh, with details such as the writing on the back of this guy's uh, uh, jacket, one man who appeared in the video, and where that, uh, where reference to this uh, uh, previously uh, took place. You can see that actually the tweet, uh, the video took place in Rwanda. Uh, it happened in mid-August uh, also, and what we know is that it was a company, Ali Group Holding, uh, that was running that at mine. And uh, the, the police actually commented on that video in uh, Kenya, Rwanda, which is a local language, uh, saying that two men had been arrested and they were being held in custody. Scene of brutality, uh, there was Chinese involvement, but this time it wasn't in Congo, it was in neighbouring Rwanda. OK, but tensions in Congo over Chinese business mining uh, and, and Chinese business activities are, are, are extremely real, aren't they? Never That's right. So the context is actually true. And you can see this is a one uh, uh, headline in the China Africa Project, a, a quite a much listened to podcast about the region. Uh, uh, police use, use force to disperse uh, anti-Chinese protests in eastern DR Congo. There was also a report about that uh, in French, about um, demonstrations against Chinese uh, mining interests in the, in the country. So, I mean, to, to try to sum that up very quickly, uh, the current president, uh, Felix uh, Chishikedi, is trying to renegotiate contracts that were signed by his predecessor, Joseph Kabila, uh, where the, the Congolese side feel the promises made by the Chinese were, haven't really been honoured. And uh, there, there were lots of examples of that. The governor of South Kivu in the east of the country 
country suspended uh, gold mining activities for one company because uh, all sorts of Ill illegalities, uh, environmental laws, mining codes, uh, human rights. So there is a perception, and indeed there are concrete examples of uh, Chinese mining interests not necessarily behaving very well in the country and a broad perception now in Congo that uh, that uh, there, it's a sort of a form of neo-colonialism is what is the language that is being used. Now this very briefly is uh, the, a scene from The City of Joy, a documentary featuring uh, the well-known gynaecologist and Nobel Prize Peace Prize winner from 2008, Den Dennis Mukwege. And in that documentary, which focuses on um, women's issues in the country, uh, he, he does speak about a form of slavery in, in, in regards to Chinese mining uh, behaviour in the country. So there, uh, there, there has been a spotlight put on this issue. So all that by way of saying the context is ripe for fake news stories such as this to be believed. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for Thanks that. Well. Today's edition of Truth or Fake with James Creedon. Thank you very much indeed.